Hello there. Welcome once again to our science lesson. Remember, we have been looking at responses in our bodies and we have emphasized that responses are important so that the body can be able to uh, can be able to adjust itself. If, for example, we have differences in temperature around the, bo the body, it has to respond in different ways, either through increasing physiological processes. So we have sensory cells that have been associated together and are specialized to perform the response mechanisms. Some of these sensory cells are specialized to form organs. Organs include the eye, the ear, the tongue, the nose, the skin, and several other organs. We have discussed the eye. We have also gone through the ear. We have said that the ear performs two major functions. One of them is perceiving sound. And the second function or role is to respond or adjust the body, posture, and balance. For us to understand those functions, we have gone through parts of the ear, and remember, we have divided the ear into, two, into three regions. That is the outer ear, which consists of the pinna and auditory canal. And then we have the middle ear, which consists of the eardrum, we have the stagian tube, we have the oval window, we have the round window, we have the ear ossicles. Remember, we also emphasized that ear ossicles are a series of three bones, very tiny bones, found in the middle ear. They are held together by suspensory ligaments. First, the first ear ossicle that is encountered from the eardrum and in fact is attached to the eardrum is called the malice, which is also given the name hammer. So we have the malice, the second one, we are calling this one hammer. The second ear oscull is incus. The other name for incus, you can remember, we said it is called anvil. The third one is steps. Steps. The other name is star up the stub the stub so we say these are very important because they amplify sound sound vibrations are supposed to be amplified so that when it reaches the inner ear which contains dense fluids it does not fade away the sound vibration do not fit because they have been amplified by these bones. But they also transmit those sound vibrations to the round window. And then we talked about the round window. We said that round window transmits sound vibration from inner ear. from the inner ear to from the middle ear that is middle ear yes middle ear to inner ear but one important feature of round window that we should also remember although I should I did not mention is that it is smaller in size it is greatly reduced in size if it is greatly reduced in size, that one 
or because of the reduced size of the round window, it even magnifies or amplifies the sound even further. It amplifies the sound vibration further, almost 22 times. It amplifies the sound vibration that reaches the, the round window 22 times. I've said amplification is important. Why? So that those sound vibrations do not fit when they reach the dense fluid of the inner ear. Now, we can now realize one thing, that we have two major structures that are meant for amplification of sound. We have the ear ossicles, And then, now we are getting very clear now, round window. So these ones, although having other functions of transmission of sound vibrations, but they are involved in amplification of sound. Amplification of sound. To emphasize again, sound has to be amplified so that it does not fit when it reaches the dense fluid found in the inner ear. So we are just doing a review of what before we reach where we were in our last lesson. Then we have other parts that we mentioned. We mentioned the semicircular canal. So briefly again, semicircular canal are those apparatus that are involved in restoring balance and posture to the body. We have said there are three semicircular canal. The one that is in that position, we have another one in that position, and another semicircular canal in that position. This one is called horizontal semicircular canal. Horizontal. This is called lateral vertical. Lateral vertical. Semicircular canal. This is called posterior. Posterior vertical semicircular canal or a canal. You can just use the word canal. Lateral vertical canal. Posterior vertical canal. Horizontal canal. So if we are talking about maintenance or restoration of body balance and posture. So if the body is not balancing up and down, it is the horizontal canal that will be involved. For sideways, if it's not balancing, if the body is going, for example, uh, you are on a boat and it's moving this direction, uh, it is trying to sway, you can still steady your body due to presence of lateral vertical canal. Then movement forward and backwards. Your, your, your boat again is maybe uh, swaying up and forward backwards. Still your body can be in a steady motion due to posterior vertical canal. So this is for forward, backwards movement of the body. <coughs> Horizontal canal up, down. Vertical canal or lateral vertical canal sideways. Sideway movement of the body. Now, the other structure, remember we are in the inner ear, but C, inner ear. So inner ear, one semicircular canal. And then now two, this structure called the cochlea. The cochlea. 
So we already know the role of semicircular canal. Now, cochlea is the major site for hearing, where hearing takes place because it has those sensory cells where hearing takes place. This is the structure for hearing. Why? Because it contains those sensory cells meant for hearing. But this structure from what we get from our diagram is that it's made up of is a spiral shaped tube. It's a spiral shaped tube made of or consisting of consisting of canals canals are cavities membranes and sensory cells but these canals are filled with fluid the canals are filled with two types of fluid fluids remember those fluids that you mentioned endolymphy and perilymphy and perilymphy we have already said or given the meaning or the role of these fluids but for the purpose of the cochlea these fluids when sound vibrations from the middle ear is transmitted into the inner ear these fluids vibrate fluids are disturbed when fluids are disturbed they also transmit the same disturb dis disturbance to sensory cells so sensory cells are stimulated sensory cells are stimulated upon stimulation of sensory cells they will generate a nerve impulse generates a nerve impulse that nerve impulse will be transmitted via auditory nerve to the brain for interpretation so it is it is going to be transmitted to the brain and specific part of the brain specific part of the brain where the nerve impulse from the cochlea is being transmitted is called cere cerebrum remember this is the part of the brain that is meant to interpret uh, vision tests and now hearing for hearing so if i may go back again i've said in the cochlea we have canals membrane and sensory cells so in those canals we have the fluids endolymphy and perilymphy when sound vibrations is transmitted into the inner ear it is going to disturb these fluids so there will be vibrations again in the fluids so the fluids are going to carry the vibrations to sensory cells. Sensory cells are disturbed. When the sensory cells are disturbed, they are going to generate a nerve impulse. That nerve impulse will be transmitted to the brain, specific part of the brain cerebrum for interpretation. Once that one happens, then the brain is going to interpret the kind of sound 
that is being produced. Like the words I'm speaking right now, they are reaching you through, they are reaching you through that mechanism that we have explained. But one thing worth noting about the cochlea, as we have said, it is spiral in shape or coiled. So the question is, why should it be coiled? Supposed to be coiled so that it increases surface area for attachment of sensory cells coiled to increase surface area. To increase surface area for attachment. For attachment of sensory cells that are concerned with hearing. So why should it be a large surface area? So that we are going to have very many sensory cells. So that even a slightest sound will be able to cause disturbance in the cochlea so that now it can trigger the mechanism of hearing. So there are supposed to be many. For them to be so many, the surface area where they are supposed to be attached is supposed to be large. So that surface area will be provided by a coiled cochlea. Then we have this part, auditory now. Auditory now. Now, after everything has been, has happened in the inner ear, those nerve impulses from semicircular canal, from the cochlea, will be transmitted to the brain via the auditory nerve. So the role of auditory nerve simply is to transmit transmission for transmission. Transmission of nerve impulses. Nerve impulses. From inner ear to the brain, to the brain. But we have two types of those sensory uh, kind of uh, impulses. The one that's meant for body balance and posture will go to a different part of the brain. If it is for balance and posture, if the nerve impulse is for balance and posture, it will go to part of the brain that is meant for balance and posture, which is called cerebellum. If it is the nerve impulse for hearing, it will be transmitted to the part of the brain that we have already mentioned, cerebrum. Cerebrum. So I think up to there, everything is clear. Now we can briefly look at how these two functions are achieved. That is the function of hearing and the functioning of maintaining body balance and posture. <coughs> so we shall begin with one mechanism of hearing. How does hearing take place? We are going to use a very simple chart just to show how this happens. Now, for hearing to take place, we must have a stimulus. Remember, a stimulus is a change in the environment. But for the purpose of the ear and hearing, the stimulus is sound. So we must have sound. But that sound will not reach the inner ear before passing through some structures. So the part that is involved, the first part of detecting sound is the pinna. So we have already said the role of pinna is to collect and deflect sound waves into 
the auditory canal. So, pina. Pina collects and deflects sound waves into auditory canal and then auditory canal <coughs> transmits sound waves to ear drum sound waves to ear drum when sound waves hits the ear drum it vibrates the ear drum is going to vibrate and in the process it transforms the sound waves into sound vibrations ear drum vibrates That's why eardrum is supposed to be flexible. For it to be flexible so that it can vibrate, we have wax in the, uh, in the outer ear to make it flexible. So it vibrates and transforms and transforms sound waves into sound vibrations this was a point of emphasis in our previous lesson I said once sound reaches the inner ear the middle ear and the inner ear it is in form of vibrations it is no longer in it cannot be in sound waves because it has been transformed then the eardrum will trans will transmit those sound vibration to the ear ossicles so sound vibrations now they have become vibrations sound vibrations are transmitted to ear ossicles now can you remember the role of ear ossicles yes you can we said the role of ear ossicles one of them is to amplify sound after amplification of sound then it transmits those sound vibrations to round window so after this what is going to happen ear ossicles amplifies sound amplifies sound vibrations amplifies sound vibrations and transmits and transmits it to round window so when sound vibrations reaches the round window the next thing that happens it also amplifies further the sound vibrations round window
amplifies further sound vibrations sound vibrations now to chalk your mind again we said the round window is small so that it can amplify the sound vibration and the intensity of vibration is almost 22 times the sound vibrations that were reaching the ear after amplification of this sound vibration they'll be transmitted to the inner ear sound vibrations are transmitted to inner ear and remember inner ear has fluids as we have said so as vibrations hit the inner ear the fluids are going to vibrate fluids in the cochlea vibrates on vibration of the fluids in the cochlea they are going to disturb or stimulate sensory cells in the cochlea to generate a nerve impulse so sensory cells in the cochlea are stimulated are stimulated to generate a nerve impulse a nerve impulse that nerve impulse is transmitted via the auditory nerve nerve impulse is transmitted via auditory nerve auditory nerve to the brain you can remember the part of the brain for hearing cerebrum to the brain the specific part cerebrum cerebrum will interpret interprets those nerve impulses and then a specific sound or uh, a specific sound is going to be interpreted it's going to be interpreted to mean something so this is how hearing takes place so if we can follow the root of sound we can use a chart a flow chart a flow diagram pina then it goes through auditory auditory canal those are sound waves they hit eardrum then eardrum transforms sound waves into sound vibrations and transmits it to ear ossicles from the ossicles sound vibrations will be transmitted to round window from the round window it will go to the inner ear the inner ear specifically 
the cochlea because that is the site where we have sensory cells for hearing. Then in the cochlea, there'll be a nerve impulse. A nerve impulse will be generated and after that, it goes to the brain for interpretation, the part of the brain cerebrum. So if you are asked to give or uh, illustrate using a flow diagram or a flow chart, how hearing takes place, just you just have to show the how the sound waves or sound vibration will be moving or will be transmitted around the ear. Then another mechanism is that one of balance. Mechanism of balance. Mechanism of achieving balance and posture. So we have already emphasized that the ear is involved in bring about balance and posture for the body. That's why when you swell for some time, we have some fluids that are going to continually move in your ear. Even if you stand, you'll have that sensation of the world moving around. So where does this take place? You can remember that it is in the semicircular canal. So this is achieved in semicircular canal, balance and posture semicircular canal. Remember we have said we have three types of semicircular canal. We have three, not types, we have three semicircular canals arranged in different planes. Arranged in different planes. The planes we have already seen that due to those planes we have horizontal canal, we have a lateral vertical canal, and then we also have posterior, posterior vertical canal. But in this semicircular canal, we also have fluids with some sensory cells. With sensory cells. But these sensory cells are stretched or located in a specialized structure within those canals called the ampulla. Sensory cells are located on the ampulla. On the ampulla. Now, having known this, then it becomes easy for us to explain how restoration of balance and posture is going to be achieved. So, to explain it properly, let us look at the cross-section of the cross-section of the canals. So, this cross-section as this. These are sensory cells all over. But again, it has a specialized structure there. That specialized structure is the one we call ampulla. 
And in these canals, we have fluids. The perilymphy and the, specifically the perilymphy and is connected to nerves. So we have nerves at that point. Now, suppose the body moves. When the body moves, we have specific parts that must also move. For instance, if the head, remember the ear is, the ears are located on the head. So, when the head moves in that direction, when the head moves in this direction, the fluids in the semicircular canal move in the opposite direction. In the opposite direction. When that one happens, it displaces the ampulla from its original position. So the ampulla is going to be displaced. And because ampulla has sensory cells for detecting changes in the body position in relation to gravity, what will happen upon this disturbance or upon this displacement is that the sensory cells are going to be stimulated. When sensory cells are stimulated, they generate a nerve impulse. That nerve impulse will be transmitted through these nerves via through the auditory nerves to the part of the brain that restores balance. So what will happen? We are going to have uh, maybe th there will be a nerve impulse to the brain. Specific parts, cerebellum, cerebellum, that is, and cerebellum will interpret, will interpret, and in the process, produce or send an impulse called motor impulse. Motor impulse. Motor impulse will, motor impulse will flow through motor neurons to muscles. Muscles here are the effectors. Muscles will contract and relax accordingly so that the body is brought back to the original position. So this is how body balance is achieved. Once you understand this, that movement of the head into a different direction makes the liquid, the fluid, the fluid in the canals to move in the opposite direction, causing displacement of the ampulla. Displacement of the ampulla, because it has sensory cells, will cause those sensory cells to be stimulated, which will generate a nerve impulse, will flow through auditory nerves to the brain specific but cerebellum, and a motor impulse will be sent to the muscles, which will now contract and relax accordingly to bring back the body back to its original position. Now, because of this, sometimes if you are going to swell or you are going to go in rounds for some time, maybe a minute, and then you stop, what happens, you still feel that, the, the, that those movements are still there. The body is trying to adjust. It's like the fluids will continue moving even after you have stopped. The fluids in the semicircular canal continues to move and they are now displacing this ampulla. It is being displaced, therefore it is going to generate those nerve impulses meant to restore body balance. And yet you are not moving, you are at a stationary point. It's just because of the fluids are continually moving in your ear. So from that, I hope you have understood how the two functions are achieved in the ear. So for that purpose, I want us to look at some few questions just to, as we wind up. Questions. So one of the, some of the questions, so one of the questions is this. You just finish, you complete the dash. The dash 
is the ear flap. Is the ear flap made of cartilage? Made of cartilage and collects and collects sound waves and collects sound waves into ear canal so the question is asking you just to feel what is this ear flap that collects sound waves into the ear canal you can remember we said it is the pinna We shall answer the question as we move. The three tiny bones of the middle ear are the three tiny bones of the middle ear are we mentioned these ones very clearly. Let us also use the order in how they appear. The first one from the eardrum, you can remember malice. You can also give an alternative name. What was the alternative name? Yeah, I think you're also thinking like me, it is called hammer. In that sequence, the next one is called incas. What is the other name of incas? I think you can remember we said it is also called anvil. The other bone, the last one, next to the round window are the steps. There was an alternative name for steps. Alternative name for steps. You can remember this one. I'll leave it for you to also complete. Question three. The dash takes. The dash takes sound from takes sound from outer ear to from outer ear to eardrum. From outer ear pinna to the eardrum. What was that structure? If you go back to the diagram, it's very easy for you to identify that part. That part is called ear canal, auditory canal, or sometimes called auditory malice. So ear canal. Ear canal. When fluid moves in the when fluids fluid moves in the dash nerve endings are stimulated are stimulated nerve endings are stimulated and your brain interprets and your brain interprets the message the message and gives 
and gives instructions. to muscles, gives instructions to muscles to help them keep balance. So we go through the question when fluid moves in the dash, now endings, that's a comma, Nerve endings are stimulated and your brain interprets the message and gives instruction to muscles to help them keep balance. So where is the fluid moving so that it can keep balance? For you to get the answer, you have to find out. We have two functions of the ear, maintaining body balance and posture. But of maintaining body balance and posture and also for hearing. Those two functions are performed by two different structures. So which structure is going to be involved in keeping body balance and in its posture? We have two parts. But now, for this purpose, which is the exact point, we call that those structures as semicircular canals. semicircular canals. Number five. Question five. The coiled fluid filled tube, the coiled fluid filled tube that is the organ for hearing that is the organ for hearing organ for hearing is is the dash so Another role of the ear is hearing, but the structure for hearing is the one that is coiled and has fluid. The fluids endodymphy and perilymphy. That structure, what was the name? You can remember, it is the cochlea. Remember we talked about the coiled, it is important for the cochlea so that it increases surface area for attachment of sensory cells. It is fluid filled, endolymphy and perilymphy. And we have seen that the role of those fluids is to transmit sound vibrations to the cochlea and specific parts where we have the sensory cells for hearing. So the fluid transmits the vibrations to the, or in the cochlea, transmits the vibration within the cochlea and in the process, it will disturb the sensory cells, which will now cause disturbance and generation of a nerve impulse forming, or which will now be transmitted to the brain for interpretation. Six. Question six. Thin membrane across the ear canal the thin, the thin membrane across the ear canal, the ear canal that vibrates, that vibrates. in response to sound, in response to sound, in 
is is the dash. So we have a membrane that vibrates after our auditory canal when sound hits it so that it transforms sound waves into sound vibration. What was the name? We gave it a name, ear drum. It's called ear drum. Seven. The dash connects The dash connects the middle ear to the throat. Connects the middle ear to the throat to equalize air pressure. We equalize air pressure between the mid ear and the atmosphere. Between the middle ear and the atmosphere. Now you can remember that tube that was connecting to the pharynx, the throat area. The one that equalizes air pressure between the middle ear and the atmosphere. We gave it a name, you can remember, we called it as Eustachian tube. Eustachian tube. And we said that tube is always closed. But it can be opened or it can open when somebody chews, when yawning, when you sneeze, when you swallow. So we cited an example that you can travel for a longer time and then you start feeling some discomfort in your ear. It's because of an equal pressure between the middle ear and the atmosphere. So what will happen? You have to find a way of releasing the pressure in the middle ear because it's like the eardrum is bulging out. So you can chew a ball gum. You, when you yawn, that is a reflex action. You can also uh, open when you swallow saliva or take a fluid. When you swallow, it opens and then when you sneeze, which is also another reflex action. Question eight. The dash connects. The dash connects. The middle ear connects the middle ear to the inner ear. the inner ear and sends vibrations into the cochlea and sends vibrations into the cochlea. So remember from the ear ossicles sound vibrations will get into the, the inner ear through a window. We say that window is called round window. Round window. Through round window. So round window connects the middle ear to the inner ear and sends vibration into the cochlea. Question nine. The nerve in the head that carries the nerve 
in the head the nerve in the head carries signals carries signals from the cochlea from the cochlea to the brain to the brain is dash the nerve in the head the nerve in the head that carries that carries signals from the cochlea to the brain is what was the name you remember that nerve was we called it auditory nerve question 10 state two functions of ear ossicles remember those tiny bones in the middle ear we gave two roles one of them is to amplify sound amplify sound and then the other one we said is involved in transmission of sound vibration from the mid ear to the uh, round window transmission of sound vibrations from the middle ear to round window and you know the role of round window which will now transmit the same to the inner ear kisha useme ba umela eh Back in Gabi, twenty twenty and 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 twenty pathway of the vibrations until a nerve impulse is generated now i think we have gone through this so at your own time after you have gone through these notes, you can do this one for yourself. And you can easily get it from your notes as you go through this. So I think the ear is well understood. In our next lesson, we are going to look at other sense organs and specifically the skin. So you can try to go through in your library or through the internet how the skin functions and how it's going to act as a sense organ to bring about responses. Thank you.